Hi, my name is Cole. I'm a member of Group 5 along with Charles, Zushin, Marcus, and Omar, and we did our project on fraud or waste management. Waste management overview. Waste management is North America's leading provider of integrated environmental solutions. They're North America's largest recycler. They have over 1,000 natural gas powered trucks, which makes them the largest fleet in the waste hauling industry. And they provide enough energy to power over 1 million homes every year. When was the fraud perpetrated? The fraud was perpetrated in 1992 to 1997 when the financial statements were falsified during that period. During that period, perpetrators fraudulently manipulated the company's financial results to meet target earnings, and they also resorted to improperly eliminating and deferring current period expenses. How the fraud was committed. The fraud was committed by the perpetrators avoiding depreciation expenses on their garbage trucks by assigning inflated salvage values and extending their useful lives. They assigned arbitrary salvage values to assets that previously had no salvage value. They failed to report expenses for decreases in the value of their landfills. And they also refused to report expenses to write off the cost of unsuccessful developmental projects. On to how the fraud was committed continued. They established inflated environmental reserves related to acquisitions so that the access revenues could be used to avoid recording unrelated operating expenses. They improperly capitalized their expenses. And they also established insufficient reserves to pay for income taxes and expenses. Now we're going to go on to Marcus who's going to talk to you about how the fraud was discovered at Waste Management. Thanks, Cole. I'm going to now talk about how the fraud was discovered. The perpetrator's scheme unraveled in July 1997 when the new CEO ordered a review of the company's accounting practices. The review led to the restatement of the financial statements for 1992 through July 1997. After filling the restated financial statements in February 1998, the company acknowledged that it had misstated earnings by $1.7 billion. Auditors' Involvement Waste management was aided in their fraud by their longtime auditors. Arthur Anderson received a premium on the fees for performing special work. Special work included 32 must-do action steps to cover up past fraud by committing additional frauds in the future. Anderson presented company management with proposed adjusting journal entries to correct errors that understated expenses and overstated earnings. There were six people involved in this fraud. There was Dean L. Buntrock, founder and CEO, Philip B. Rooney, president and chief operating officer, James E. Koenig, executive VP and CFO, Thomas C. Howe, controller and CAO, Herbert Getz, Senior VP and Secretary, and Bruce D. Tobixson, VP of Finance. Buntrock, the founder of the CEO, was the primary beneficiary of the fraud. He received more than $16.9 million, mostly from performance-based bonuses, retirement benefits, selling corporate stock, and charitable giving. He fostered a culture of fraudulent accounting within waste management. The President and Chief Operating Officer Rooney received $9.2 million from performance-based bonuses and selling company stock. He ensured that the required write-offs were not recorded and he overruled accounting decisions that would ultimately lead to negative impact on operations. I'm no, now going to pass it to Omar where he will continue to talk about the other perpetrators. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, so James Coney, the CFO, he received 900000 from the scheme. He was the primary responsible for executing the scheme. He ordered the destruction of damaging evidence, withheld evidence from outside auditors. Thomas Howe, controller, CAO, he gained about 600000 from his fraudulent acts, considered principal technician behind the schemes, devised many one-off accounting manipulations to attain target earnings. He crafted deceptive disclosures. Bruce Tobixson, VP of Finance, gained 400000 known as Koenig's right-hand man. Herbert Getz, Senior VP, Secretary, gained 450000 contributed to the fraudulent financial disclosures. Who was affected by the fraud? Shareholders. They were the most affected by the scheme. Estimated losses of $6 billion in the market value of their investments. Stock prices dropped by more than 33% and uh, management, waste management's reputation was affected. The SEC's reaction. 
stated that Anderson knowingly or recklessly issued false and misleading and qualified audit reports. Anderson failed to stand up to management to prevent the issuance of materially misstated financial statements. Arthur Anderson, three Arthur Ar Anderson audit partners were fined. Uh, Anderson was fined seven million with regards to their involvement in waste management. That was the largest fine ever imposed on the company. The audit program, now I'll go on to Charles. Now Charles will take on. Thanks, Omar. Again, my name is Charles, and I'll be talking about the audit program. The audit program consists of two major sections. The first section is the systems portion, which involves internal control. The second section is the substantive procedures portion, which involves the financial statement balance, account balances. What is the systems portion planned around? The systems portion is planned around the revenue cycle, acquisition cycle, conversion cycle, payroll cycle, the investing cycle, and the finance cycle. Audit procedures includes obtaining an understanding for the controls for each cycle, preparing a flow chart for each cycle, testing significant controls, and assessing control risk for the financial statement assertions. Tests of controls provide two types of evidence. First evidence of, is of internal controls. Second is substantive evidence of recorded information. And now I'll pass on to Zushin for the substantive procedures. Thank you, Charles. So I'm going to go over the audit program substantive procedures. Um, specific audit objectives for internal inventory is to make sure that all assets are presented at net realizable value to avoid misstatement of salvage value or omission of depreciation. Audit program substantive procedures continue. Analyze the accounting principles applied or generally accepted principles. Test the accuracy of client's application of the method of valuation on assets. Vouch for the acquisition cost of assets to paid checks and other documentary evidence. Evaluate reasonableness of cost allocation and verify computation of remaining unallocated costs. Compare fair value assets to price on existing market or examine valuation method used to develop the values. Specific audit for objectives to account was payable. To determine proper cutoff date for transactions to ensure exp expenses are recorded on the period incurred and not deferred to subsequent periods. Obtain an age trial balance of payables, test its clerical accuracy, and reconcile to the ledgers. Vouch for purchases and cash dis disbursements occurring at the period end. Thank you guys for paying attention. Um, if any questions, please let us know.